If you're like me and you've got a door that doesn't want to latch, then you've come to the right place. I'm going to give you five reasons why this could be happening and how to easily solve each one. Coming up. To start this little bit of troubleshooting, I'm going to start with the latch itself, having a look and making sure it comes in and out as it should. These internal door latch mechanisms are never the highest quality and can easily start sticking with age and a lack of lubrication. If the latch is intermittently sticking, a quick squirt of WD-40 or 3-in-1 oil and a few cycles of the latch in and out should get it working again. It's also important to check that the hole in the middle of the strike plate that the latch clicks into is open and free from either wood from the frame or any other foreign body stopping the latch moving into it when it's closed. I've seen doors where the combination of the latch not coming out very far and the gap between the door and the frame is so big that the latch is simply not protruding out far enough to even touch the strike plate. Which is obviously not the case here, but if you do find that this gap is so large that the latch can't catch onto the strike plate because the door has been badly fitted. Rather than changing the door, there is actually a way of adjusting this and moving it over so that latch is closer to the strike plate. And it's about adjusting these hinges, and I'll show you how to do that now with a set of playing cards. Playing cards are sometimes used by woodworkers to shim items, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. It doesn't matter what type of cards you use, I find the ones I steal from my children's bedrooms work the best. With one side of the hinge open, offer up the card, you'll see I'm using a pack of Donkey Don today, and mark the size of the hinge plate on the card. This allows you to cut the card to the exact size of the plate, and then it can be used as a template to make some more. With these cut to size, they can be added behind the hinge plate, between the hinge and the frame, and, if needed, also between the hinge and the door, without anyone seeing them. And we'll give an adjustment up to a maximum of around 6mm or quarter of an inch, depending on the size and thickness of your hinges. The same screws can be used again and just punch through the cards when screwed in. Obviously, the more shims or cards you use, the closer the door will move towards the door frame on the lock side. This is also a good way of levelling a door if you just use them on the bottom hinge to help pick the door up if it started to fall slightly. So if it's none of the three issues we've already looked at, then it's probably going to be the position of the strike plate relative to the latch. Now, there's a couple of problems here that could arise. The strike plate could be too high, or too low, or too far back. What you find with older doors, as they get older and they start to fall a little bit, then the probability is the latch is coming in too low and never actually getting into this hole. So we'll have a look at the latch and where it's gonna hit the strike plate. I'm using a piece of masking tape here on the plate just to highlight my pencil marks. With the door closed, I can mark the top and bottom positions of the latch and then with the door open, I can compare them with the receiving hole on the plate. On my door here, the bottom of the latch is worryingly close to the bottom of the hole, but probably just high enough for it to fit in. Looking closely at the latch as the door is closed, I can see that it's semi-latching and going slightly into the receiving hole, but not enough to really catch properly. It looks like it's starting to run around this radius, but not far enough to securely click into the hole. I'm also worried about it touching the bottom section, which is a common problem with doors that have started to fall. If this is the case, and it's only just missing the hole, then one solution is to grind down the bottom of the plate slightly, with a file or dremel if you own one, I don't, to essentially make the hole bigger. 
This only works if the latch is really close to fitting. In my case, the strike plate only needs to be moved forward a millimetre or two, a sixteenth of an inch, I would say, to get a nice secure fit. And what I'm about to do is exactly the same process if the plate needs to be moved down slightly because it's not fitting. Interestingly, my strike plate has its own plastic box which sits behind it, which means you physically can't see any timber frame through the hole, which is the first time I've come across this type before, and quite a nice detail. I position the plate where I think it needs to be and mark the edge which gives me a line for my chisel to cut to. Here my frames are standard softwood so with a sharp chisel I don't really need to use a hammer. I gradually cut deeper along my mark until I'm at the same depth as the rest of the rebate on the plate. Because I've moved the whole plate forward I also have to enlarge the front section of the hole to allow the latch to enter. There is something quite satisfying about working with softwood and a sharp chisel. Take your time and keep running around the perimeter of the cut and gradually just get deeper. Before fixing the plate permanently, I use masking tape to temporarily hold it in position to try to see if I've moved it forward enough. I can immediately see that the latch is now moving fully into the receiving hole with the plate in this position, so time to secure it permanently. As I've moved the plate forward, the existing screw holes are now off centre, and if I try to reuse these, they'll pull the plate back to the original position as I tighten them up. So I'm going to fill the existing holes with matchsticks and re-drill new holes in the correct position. I prefer using matchsticks to toothpicks, which is another common way of filling holes like these, as they're closer to the type of wood I have in the frame here, and they're easy to whittle down to shape if you need to. These existing holes to fill are too big for one matchstick and too small for two, so I'm shaving some wood away from two to make it a perfect tight fit. I force these as far in as I can to the screw holes and then trim with a standing knife. If you get the fit right, there's no need for glue, they won't be going anywhere. I can now offer back up the plate and using a braddle, or in my case a nail, make a shallow pilot hole which will help stop the drill from wandering. I start with the smallest drill bit I have and then enlarge the holes to the correct size for the screws I'm using. So with the strike plate in its new position, I've got a nice positive click of the latch and hardly any play on it once it's there. So we're back to where we started, except for I've actually got a door that now works, which is really good. Now I was lucky with that strike plate that I didn't have any gaps around it. But if you do have any gaps, all you need to do is fill them in with a little bit of this flexible type sealer, especially the one that can be painted so you can paint it 
in the years to come. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe. So from another really good job done, although I think Donkey Don is never going to quite look the same again. I'll see you next time. Thank you.